All right, today we're finally talking about clone photography. Yeah, come in. You, dude, can I talk to you? Yeah, dude, oh. I'm making a video like right now. Oh, so. yeah, right. Yeah, I'll get out of here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, anyway, uh, where was I? Yeah, clone photography. Oops, sorry, my phone, the long dude. Hello people of the internet, welcome back to the channel, it's good to be back. Now I know that I've been MIA for quite some time now, but I had a lot of work and school related stuff that I had to get to. Plus there was and still is a worldwide pandemic, which left me uninspired to make videos here on YouTube. However, I have been pretty active on TikTok. Yes, that's right, I have a TikTok channel, so go ahead and check that out if that's something that you're into. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much what I've been up to in the past couple of months and today's video is very heavily inspired by something that I started doing on TikTok when quarantine hit us real hard in Hungary a couple months ago. Uh, we were uh, forced to stay inside, we couldn't go out, I couldn't have to take photos either. So I was sort of forced to get creative here in my own room and take photos with whatever I had at my disposal. And that brings us to today and today's video when we're gonna be talking about clone photography. I got a lot of requests from people asking me to make a tutorial on this, and even though I uploaded a very short video on TikTok explaining the basics of this technique, I thought I should upload another video here on YouTube and go into a little bit more details as to how to actually do clone photography. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Now, in case you don't know what clone photography is, it's basically the idea of having multiple versions of the same subject in one photograph. The reason why this technique is so awesome and the reason why I love it is because it gives you unlimited creative freedom in how you approach each and every shot. It's also important to mention that clone photography is nothing new. It's been around for a really long time. In fact, the first ever photo that I took in 2014, that's six years ago, the first photo that I took, edited, and then uploaded to the internet for other people to see was this Facebook profile picture. So this was taken in 2014. As you can see, a lot of things have changed since then, like my hair, but other things haven't, like my love and passion for this beautiful photography technique. And by the way, this photo is how my journey as a photographer began back in 2014. Ever since then, I have taken a lot of clone photos as well. And just recently, I decided to reignite my passion for what is probably my all-time favorite photography technique. Now, clone photography looks kind of complicated, but actually it isn't. The way we're going to create these photos is by taking multiple photos of the same subject moving, but we're gonna make sure that our camera stays completely in the same position. So you cannot have any camera shake or camera movement, and the way we're gonna achieve this is by using a tripod. Once you have all the photos, you just need to bring them into Photoshop and mask out individually the person in each frame, and then you will have your final image. I'm also gonna show you how to do that, of course, but first, a couple of things. So again, use a tripod. You really cannot have any camera shake. If you don't have a tripod, then try to put your camera on a very steady and very secure horizontal surface and then hope for the best. But I'm assuming that a tripod is going to be your best bet here. Now, another thing is I'm gonna be taking these photos of myself because I don't have anyone at home currently, which means that I also need a way to remotely control the camera. Um, luckily, I'm using Sony, and with Sony, it's very easy to do this. I can just fire up my iPhone, and I can control my camera with my iPhone. So that's not gonna be an issue. Now, if you're taking photos of your friend, when you press the button on your camera to take the photo, you might still cause some camera shake. So if possible, I would recommend that you always stick to remote control, because that way you can take photos without even having to touch the body of the camera. But this is just a pro tip. Now here are some extra things you want to pay attention to. You want to make sure to use manual settings across the board. So you want to have 
manual ISO, aperture and shutter speed. And you wanna keep those settings the same across all photos. Secondly, you also need to have manual white balance. So basically do not set your camera to auto white balance. Number three is that you also wanna be using manual focus. The reason why we're doing all of these things again is because you want to have as much control over each individual shot as you can. You wanna have the same lighting conditions across each photo, and you also want to have the same focus across each photo, so that when we go into Photoshop, you don't actually have to do too much. You just need to crop out each person in each shot, and that's all you have to do. All right, so this is my room here. I know it's very messy, but hey, I'm a boy, so cut me some slack, please. Um, and I kind of set up the scene here and I decided how I'm going to compose these photos. So I'm going to have one version of myself sitting on this stool and I'm going to put my feet up somewhere there. And I'm going to have another version of myself sitting on this other stool and I'm going to put my feet up somewhere there. And this way I'm going to have a few out of focus elements and hopefully a nice little composition. So for this reason, I actually opted for not using a tripod because I realized that I need a very low angle somewhere in this position. So I just decided to put my camera down on the bed and I am using this Sharpie to elevate the lens a little bit to get a better perspective. So basically the perspective that I'm going for is going to look something like this, minus the camera of course, and hopefully it's gonna look as good in real life as it does in my head. So give me a few minutes and I'm gonna be right back with the finished photos inside of Adobe Lightroom. All right, so now we are inside of Adobe Lightroom and I actually imported both of the photos that I took. This is the first one. I'm just sort of uh, browsing through my phone or playing on it, I don't know. And then here's the other one where I'm actually writing something on my whiteboard. So we need to combine these two photographs and the way that we're going to do that is by selecting both of them and then right clicking on them and then go edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. So what this is going to do is it's actually gonna open up both of these photos in Photoshop and it's going to place them on the same document as two independent layers. So this is the easiest and most convenient way to actually go about this. So as you can see, here's one photo and then here's the other. And there's only one thing that we have to do in order to combine the two photos and that is to apply a layer mask. So this photo is the one where I'm on the left side. So I'm gonna apply a layer mask and then make sure that your foreground color is set to black and then just select the rectangular selection tool, draw a rectangle right about here and then alt backspace. That's going to fill in that area with black color. And as you can see, we are pretty much finished. There's only one problem and that is we can see this very visible line where I created the mask, but don't worry, there are many ways to get rid of it. I think in this case, all I have to do is grab a soft black brush and actually just paint over this area where it's so visible. What I'm going, when I'm going to zoom out, you won't notice the difference, trust me. So I'm painting over it like that and yeah, so now all you have to do is press a uh, control S or go up to file save. And when it's finished, it's actually going to open up a TIFF file in Adobe Lightroom. And now all you need to do is color grade this in the way that you want. So I'm just gonna look for uh, a preset that I have on my computer. And it's a bit too dark, so I'm gonna increase the exposure to about yeah, to about 1 or 1.1. 1 .1. And we're pretty much finished. So this is the final product. <gasps> All right, so that actually brings us to the end of today's episode. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you aren't already, and make sure to tag me on Instagram if you do end up creating a clone photo on your own. And you can also tag me on TikTok if you happen to upload a video of yourself doing it. Also, let me know what kind of other videos you wanna see in the future. I have a lot of great ideas lined up, but it's always nice to hear what the community wants to see, what kind of videos you guys want me to make. So with that said, uh, stay safe and take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.